Good evening, everyone. Thanks for being here. We're here for a city council meeting, and it is Monday, March 16th, 2020. We'll start this meeting with a roll call and determination of quorum. Okay, thank you. And tonight's invocation will be presented by uh, Judy Miller with the Rapid City Ministry Connection. Now, if you would join us for the Pledge of Allegiance, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, everyone. And now on the agenda, it's time for the City Council to adopt the agenda and they can adopt the agenda as written or they may make certain alterations to it. So would there be a motion from council? We have a motion from Laura Armstrong and a second by Lance Lehman to adopt the agenda. All in favor of that motion say aye. aye. Opposed? Say no. Motion carries. Okay, I'm going to walk down to the podium for a couple of uh, uh, awards and recognitions. First up, I'd like to first up, I would like to read a proclamation for Meals on Wheels America. Whereas Meals on Wheels America established the March for Meals campaign in March 2002 to recognize the historic month, the importance of the Older Americans Act nutrition programs, both congregate and home delivered and raise awareness about the escalating problem of senior hunger. And whereas Meals on Wheels Western South Dakota, both congregate and home delivered, have served our communities admirably for nearly 50 years, and whereas volunteers for Meals on Wheels programs in Western South Dakota are the backbone of the program, and they not only deliver nutritious meals to seniors and individuals with disabilities who are at significant risk of hunger and isolation, but also caring concern and attention for their welfare. And whereas Meals on Wheels Western South Dakota programs provide nutritious meals to seniors that help them maintain their health and independence, thereby preventing unnecessary falls, hospitalizations, and or premature institutionalization, and a powerful socialization opportunity to help combat loneliness and isolation. And whereas Meals on Wheels Western South Dakota deserve recognition
for the contributions they have made and will continue to make to local communities, our state, and our nation. Now, therefore, I, Steve Allender, Mayor of Rapid City, South Dakota, hereby proclaim March 16th through 20th, 2020, and March 2020, respectively, as Nutrition Community Champions Week and Adult Nutrition Month in recognition, recognition of our Meals on Wheels programs, the seniors they serve, and the volunteers who care for them. Now, I believe we have a statement from Council President Laura Armstrong from Meals on Wheels. Thank you, Mayor. I have a statement from George Larson and Jody Litz from Meals on Wheels. Thank you, Mr. Mayor and Council members. Particularly in this time of acute need for the aging members of our community, we want to thank you for the valued partnership between you, the leaders of Rapid City, and Meals on Wheels Western South Dakota. This is a partnership that continues to endure our most vulnerable and are cared for both nutritionally and socially, and they can remain safe and well in their homes. While we are, of course, disheartened that we can't highlight the community champions of Rapid City in a way we have done in years past, this year's March for Meals will no doubt be one of our most memorable and truly illustrate how engaged, committed, and caring the people of our community are. As an organization on the front lines of this new pandemic, we are here to help put into action all of the boundless compassion the people of Rapid City have and work together to ensure that its citizens are cared for today, tomorrow, and for as long as we are needed. Thank you from George Larson and Jody Litz. All right. <clears throat> Thank you. And now we're going to recognize our Veteran of the Month. I get Bill Casper to come over and join me and anyone else you want to bring. So in preparation for this um, Veteran of the Month presentation, I asked for an abbreviated version of the story because uh, to save time at the council meeting, and sometimes they're very detailed and uh, they seem to go on forever. But in looking at the abbreviated version and the real version, and given who this particular veteran is, I'm going to read the long version because it just can't, it can't uh, go without saying. But our veteran of the month is Maury Crow. Um, and uh, here's the story. And by the way, Maury Crow's not here with us tonight because he's smarter than us. He decided to stay home and... Uh, not expose himself to us to, uh... <laughs> okay, good. <laughs> okay, so here's the story. In partnership with the Rapid City Veterans Commission, we're pleased to present the March 2020 Veteran of the Month recognition to Mr. Maurice Maury Crow. It's with great honor that we recognize Mr. Maury Crow as our Veteran of the Month for March. Mr. Crow is a World War II veteran who will celebrate his 100th birthday on March 31st. Maury was born in Arlington, Washington on March 31, 1920. He entered the military in 1941 in Seattle, Washington after the bombing of Pearl Harbor. He was a U.S. Army Air Corps tech sergeant with five stripes and served in the European theater during World War II. Maury was a flight engineer and a top turret gunner on a Boeing B-17 Flying Fortress bomber. He and his crew flew 30 missions with the 8th Air Force 332nd Bomb Group. On Maury's first combat assignment, his B-17 was returning from a bombing mission when they were jumped by German F-109s, one of which shot off the cowlings on the engine of his plane's starboard side. A bullet penetrated the oxygen tanks under the co-pilot's seat, causing them to explode. The explosion blew the floor out from under Maury's position. When he came to, he found a piece of shrapnel sticking out of his leg. It didn't bleed, and Maury believes that the heat from the shrapnel cauterized the wound. Maury returned from the war in 1943 and was stationed at the Rapid City Army Air Base, now known as Ellsworth Air Force Base, where he was an instructor 
training new B-17 crews for combat. Maury left the military in 1945 as a highly decorated combat airman, earning a Distinguished Flying Cross, Bronze Star, a Purple Heart, and a Presidential Unit Citation. After leaving the military, Maury stayed in Rapid City, where he met his wife, Lucille. They lived together in Silver City for 35 years and were married for 60 years until her passing in 2005. In Maury's post-military career, he worked in the construction trades, finished carpentry, and heavy equipment operating. Maury currently resides in Rapid City and spends his time working out and playing a mean game of cribbage and bingo. He attends the ice cream social in his former hometown of Silver City annually and enjoys going to his nephew's ranch each year to watch them brand. Having served his country and his family with honor, courage, and commitment, Mr. Maury Crow is a true patriot of the United States Air Force. He is most deserving of this honor, and we would like to extend our gratitude on behalf of the citizens of Rapid City. And now, uh, some words from Bill Casper. It was worth it. Thank you. Uh, to Court Murray, uh, damn it. He said, first they postponed my birthday, and now they won't let me come to this ceremony tonight. Uh, he's uh, a little agitated, but uh, he's under quarantine, and so he can't uh, get out of the place whether he wants to or not. Uh, he exercises. He's got a, a, uh, one of those bands. He does 40 ba uh, bicep curls three times a day. Uh, he has a rocker recliner that lifts up, and he uh, shows me how he takes his walker and turns it around, locks it in front, and then he does knee bends. And so if he falls over, he falls back to his rocker, and he can just get right back up again. So he's, he's very active. Uh, he's got uh, macular degeneration. But when I go over to play curvage with him, uh, I, I lose just as much as I win. So I, don't, I think he's kind of fibbing. But uh, he's quite an individual, just, again, one of our greatest generation, so I thank you for him. For him. Uh, his nephew has got a ranch down in the White River. Uh, they couldn't make it up. They had 139 calves right now in their cabin, so uh, with the snowstorm coming, they thought they better stay away. So thank you. Well, as long as I have the microphone, I'd like to address the council for a second, just on, a, just on an update about what we've been doing today, uh, preparing a message, meeting with department directors about the uh, COVID-19 or the coronavirus. I thought it may be of interest to you. What we know today, and uh, that's going to be the title of a, uh, uh, or the segment of a, of a routine communication we do, is what we know. Um, so far in South Dakota, there's been about 500 tests for coronavirus with 10 positive results. Of those 10 positive results, all of them are related to travel outside our borders. Uh, South Dakota is yet to have a case of community transmission of this virus. So let's keep it that way. I think the, uh, the order of the day should be to remain calm. The point of this exercise is to avoid widespread infection. And it's relatively easy to do with basic hygiene practices and following some very simple CDC guidelines. Uh, we should all avoid rumors about the disease, especially social media rumors. Just because someone posted on Facebook quoting some expert somewhere, uh, it is not uh, super reliable information. And we live in a time right now when we're drowning in information but starving for reliable, trustworthy information sometimes. Hoarding toilet paper is a symptom of that. It's completely illogical. It has nothing to do with coronavirus. I think it has to do with the unknown. There's a rumor started that all the toilet paper in America is created in China and it's going to run out and then the government's going to quarantine us for months in our own homes. All of these rumors cause us to go and, and uh, binge buy basic necessities. And all this really accomplishes is it deprives others of much needed personal hygiene supplies. Grocery stores will remain open. And the grocery store supply chain is good. 
the internet, or the, uh, the interstates and highways are open, the trucking companies are working, and products are moving just as they always have. However, if you're in the store and you see people panicking, it's human nature for some of that to rub off on you. And my ask of all of us is that we don't do that. We resist it. We let them see us being calm rather than the other way around. Trust that supplies will be there next week, and if we can all get on the same page, then they will be. There is a real concern regarding the spread of COVID-19, but a more uh, prominent threat at this time is how we are all reacting to it. This is a good opportunity for us to learn, plan, and respond appropriately to this and future threats. The basic CDC guidelines, which can be found at the CDC website, www.cdc.gov, uh, are um, very uh, simple and basic, and uh, everyone can read and follow them. Of special note, uh, this morning, there was a change to those guidelines requesting that communities limit the size of community gatherings to 50. And uh, now in the last hour or two, it seems like that recommendation may be changing to limiting it to 10 people. Social distancing generally, which is a new term, the term of 2020 so far, social distancing. Uh, and for person-to-person -person interaction, remain six feet away from people. Uh, a large percentage of this type of disease transmission occurs within six feet. Uh, and so we want to stay at six feet or more. So we will avoid shaking hands or high fives. If you must sneeze or cough, you should do so in a tissue or in your elbow, and then wash your hands. Uh, it's a good time, good, good reminder for us to enhance personal hygiene after venturing out into the public, to the store, or to other people's homes, and uh, when you get back, uh, wash, wash up. And hardest of all at this point seems to be avoiding touching your face. Since I've been up here, I think every one of you have touched your faces, and uh, probably all of you too. It's a habit we grew up with. It's going to be very hard to get away from, but um, that is a, uh, a sure way to transmit germs. As far as the city of Rapid City goes and the delivery of services, the city water service, the sewer service, garbage collection, and public safety operations are guaranteed. There is nothing to do with this virus that can prevent the delivery of these basic and very important services. So there is no reason to stockpile bottled water. We're going to have quality uh, tap water anytime you want it throughout this and future threats. Today, the swim center and ice rink remain closed until further notice. The Rapid City Public Library is closed except for the drive-through window. Uh, at City Hall and other city facilities, we are limiting office meetings uh, to essential uh, meetings only and uh, so that we can observe crowd size and social distancing guidelines. We're asking for the self-identification uh, for employees to identify themselves as not feeling well and going home. Uh, we have employees home right now, uh, just generally not feeling well. We do have a, a small number of city employees who are self-isolated or self-quarantined, that's probably not the right word, but uh, who have been exposed to someone who is sick and are now isolating themselves until that person's test is back. And so that continues as a precaution. But there's more to come. We should expect regular updates. I watched the governor's um, press conference today. Uh, it was very informative. Uh, they're receiving uh, new test uh, results all the time. Um, so this is time for us to come together as a community, to remain calm. And you cannot, you cannot be a community if you're fighting with someone in the toilet paper aisle. Be careful, but be thoughtful. We need to depend on each other. Commercial lab testing is on the way. It may not be here today, but um, we have uh, 
what could be uh, a bottleneck with a state health lab in terms of getting tests turned around. Well, we have a very low number of tests being taken. Very soon, commercial lab tests will be able to do this. Um, Monument Health sent a nice message today talking about all their efforts to do screening over the phone and uh, an uh, uh, online uh, tool as well, and then they are doing uh, drive-through testing uh, for those patients who have been screened. This pandemic will come to an end. Uh, whether or not it waits for the, for the vaccine to be released some time from now, or whether it comes to a natural end. It's time for us to stay positive and stay informed, and we will continue to update uh, as soon as anything changes on this topic. So thanks for listening. I have a question, Mayor. Yes. How about some social distancing for the dais? <laughs> Sounds like a great idea. Thank you. Okay, moving on. Now it's time for, well, I don't believe we have any general public comment. We do? Where are they? Oh, you're going to read one. Okay, this is time for general public comment, a time for uh, members of the public to discuss or express concerns to the council on any issue not on the agenda. Action will not be taken on those items unless they are placed on the agenda by unanimous consent of the council members present. So we'll go to Laura Armstrong. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, Molly Barari, who is one of my constituents, asked me to read this to you or to us. Uh, she works at Vitalent, the local blood donation center, which is at 2209 West Omaha Street. And she says that we uh, urgently need blood donations. Due to the coronavirus outbreak, numerous blood drives have been canceled. We need your help making up for these losses to ensure blood remains on shelves for those in need. All blood types are requested, and we encourage healthy people to come out and donate immediately. Please bring a buddy with you if you can. Vitalant is open seven days a week, and walk-ins are certainly welcome. Donors can also make appointments at www.vitalant, that's V-I-T-A-L-A-N-T dot org, or by calling the front desk at 605-646-2625. Thank you for your support in this critical time of need. Please spread the word to your family, friends, and acquaintances. Together, we can make it through this pandemic. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Yes, that will conclude our general public comment. Now on to non-public hearing items, items 4 through 42. And uh, there are no uh, speaker requests for public comment, so we'll go straight to consent items 4 through 35. Would the council like to pull any of these items off? We'll go to Darla Drew. Thank you, Mayor. 19, 20, and 21. Okay, any other council members want to pull items off for individual consideration? If not, could we have a motion to uh, approve the consent items with the exception of 19 through 21? So moved, second. Motion by Drury, second by Armstrong. All in favor of that motion say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. We'll go to number 19. Approve request from Dave and Jan Snyder for a variance to waive the requirement to install a sidewalk along Pinecrest Drive, Rapid City, per City Ordinance 12.08.060. Darla Drew. Thank you. Um, just because all three of these were about um, sidewalk variances, it gave me some pause and I wanted to have just a little bit more information on them it, because we are trying to make people install their sidewalks when they pull these, you know, requests for building. Um, and it seems like so often we don't um, require that. Now, I trust the Public Works 
um, committee to make the right decision on this, but I just need a little bit more information. So um, could I get uh, Dale to please tell me, and you could take all three of them if you want to. That's because I, I just want to know about all of them. Okay, we'll go to Public Works Director Dale Tech. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Yeah, all three of these items uh, were evaluated by staff. Uh, the first two are in residential areas where there is not any sidewalk anywhere nearby. Uh, the one, the, the very first item, item 19 on Pinecrest, uh, the road nearby uh, going up the hill, I forget the name of it, was recently reconstructed. Uh, it's very steep grade. There was nowhere to, app, uh, to even put sidewalk in with that recent construction. So it just does not make a lot of sense uh, in low volume roads uh, to install the sidewalk. So items 19 and 20 were residential areas where uh, the near sidewalk were hundreds of feet away. Uh, no demand paths alongside the road. Um, and then the, the third item along Poplar Avenue, there's actually a business located there. Um, they are putting sidewalk in along the east-west road, but the north-south road they are not uh, due to the fact that it is paved um, all the way up to the front door. Um, so it make, made sense. There's no foot traffic in that area. It's, it's not an arterial road. It's just a local industrial road, if you will. Uh, so the staff's recommendation, I believe, is consistent with previous direction that we've received from council as far as uh, inability to install sidewalk, and I believe that, uh, once again, they're consistent with uh, previous direction. So on the first two where they're residential, you don't see any um, particular growth pattern there where there would be need for sidewalk eventually, or? No, these, these are in established neighborhoods. Um, I believe the construction that's taking place on both of those um, aren't for necessarily new structures, but additions to existing structures. Um, oh, as, I, okay. as I said, there's not any demand paths along the roadway where people have been walking off the roadway. Uh, so it just doesn't make sense at this point in time to install sidewalk for these two residential areas. No skateboarders or anything? I'm kidding. I, I would imagine the skateboarders <laughs> do use the public roadway, uh, which is uh, another issue. Okay. All right. But I, I just really needed to talk about those because of, of them all being waving sidewalks. And it's something this council has talked about a lot, you know, as far as like getting the sidewalks into the residential area. So I was a little concerned. So thank you. Okay, uh, we have a motion on 19. Second. Motion approved by Drury, second by Lehman. All in favor of approval say aye. aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Item 20, approved request from Jim and Susan Lagland for a variance to waive the requirement to install sidewalk along Corral Drive, Rapid City, per ordinance 12-08-060. Motion to approve Lewis, second by Drury. All in favor of approval say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Item 21, approve request from affordab uh, Affordably Creative Engineering Services for a variance to waive the requirement to install sidewalk along the frontage of the lot located at 110 North Poplar Ave Avenue, Ver um, City Ordinance 1208060. Motion to approve Drury, second Armstrong. All in favor of approval say aye. aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Oh, uh, okay. That last one uh, was uh, with one, one no from Darla Drew. Okay. And that's the end of consent. Uh, Non-consent non items 36 through 42. There are no speaker requests for the public comment period here. So we'll go directly into ordinances, starting with item 36. Item 36, first reading, ordinance 6386, an ordinance amending section 17.06 of chapter 17 of the Rapid City Municipal Code, a request by Corey Back for SLH Holdings, LLC, for a rezoning request from general agricultural to medium density residential district for property generally described as being located northeast of the intersection of Samus Trail and Healing Way. Motion, Motion to approve Drury, second by Drew. All in favor of approval say aye. aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Item 37. 
First reading, Ordinance 6398, an ordinance amending Section 17.06 of Chapter 17 of the Rapid City Municipal Code, a request for Dream Design International for Yasmin Dream LLC for a rezoning request from General Agricultural District to Medium Density Residential District for property generally described as being located east of Elkvale Road, south of Jaffa Garden Way. Motion to approve Nordstrom, uh, second by Mr. Stroman. All in favor of approval say aye. aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Item 38, first reading, Ordinance 6399, an ordinance amending Section 17.06 of Chapter 17 of the Rapid City Municipal Code, a request by Dream Design International for Yasmin Dream LLC for a rezoning request from General Agricultural District to Medium Density Residential District for property generally described as being located east of Elkvale Road, south of Jaffa Garden Way. Motion to approve Nordstrom, second by Drew. All in favor of approval say aye. aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Item 39, first reading, Ordinance 6402 regarding Supplemental Appropriation 2 for 2020. Motion to approve by Drew, second by Nordstrom. All in favor of approval say aye. aye. Opposed? Motion carries. This takes us down to Legal and Finance Committee items. Item 40, approve request from South Dakota School of Mines and Technology to, to waive the banner fee for M Week for the calendar years 2020 through 2025. Recommendation was to send to council without recommendation. Motion approved Stroman and a second by Nordstrom. Uh, and we'll go, go to Becky, Becky Drury. Parks, yes. Parks. Sorry. Parks Director Jeff Beagler. Just gave him a demotion. I don't know if there's anybody here from the School of Mines that. Oh, good. Oh, I don't think I need a microphone. But we did, we did send this to council without recommendation because there was no one at legal and finance to even address it. So if you guys could just give us a short sure. synopsis, it would be helpful. Well, thank you. Um, my name is Corey Headland. I'm the Director of Student Life and Engagement at South Dakota Mines. Um, Calvin Tome is our student um, who's in charge of homecoming. Uh, five years ago, the previous director of my office had submitted a request to the Legal and Finance Committee uh, to waive the banner fee because they were going every year um, and we're getting the request approved every year. Uh, but five years ago, the Legal and Finance Committee graciously um, provided us with a five-year waiver. Um, and when we look at those over-the-street banners of Main Street and St. Joe, they really help promote the homecoming celebration at South Dakota Mines. Um, and we celebrate a lot of traditions um, at the School of Mines. And, and through those celebrations during that week, we really look to incorporate the, the local Rapid City community as much as possible. Whether that's attending one of our many sporting events throughout that week, um, attending our our bonfire on campus or you know we've done parades in the past um, it's just a great opportunity to get the, the members of the Rapid City community involved it also helps us create awareness for, for us um, we try to reach out to many businesses as much as possible whether it's getting free ice cream for our students at Armadillo's or a free movie at the Elks Theater um, but this also adds to the event many of you have probably seen during homecoming many of the downtown business windows painted as part of the paint the town program um, that has been just one of those great opportunities for our students to work alongside with local businesses to paint the windows to help advertise. And so that's really what we're looking at by having these banners here is just to help create that awareness. Um, and we know that's really important to nurture those relationships with the community, uh, especially as we work to make Rapid City a college town, just not a town with a college in it. Happy to answer any questions that you may have. Darla Drew. I have a question for Greg Be or Jeff Beegler, please. <laughs> Craig. <laughs> it's not the first time I've messed up your name either. Um, so is this something we do for other nonprofits as well? Jeff? Uh, you know, on an individual basis, uh, we have had uh, groups that have uh, requested uh, fee waivers uh, through council. It's not a regular occurrence, no, but we have done it in the past for the School of Mines. Like Black Hills Powwow or things like that? Or, uh, yeah. We do it for LNI. We don't, oh. 
so those, uh, some of those groups, uh, the fee is waived for those. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Richie Nordstrom. Thank you, Mayor. I'm going to support the motion because we've uh, set a precedent for starting up five years ago on this. It's up for a very short period of time and it's not really replacing or taking up space for other banners that would be using it or utilizing this space as well. So it, uh, that's the reason why I'm supporting it. Very, very straightforward. Thank you, Mayor. Chad Lewis. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, Mr. Mr. Stroman, I got me saying it. <laughs> Mr. Bigler. <laughs> Yay. Um, can you tell me the approximate cost to the city, to the Parks Department when you do that? To, do, to place up the banners, take them down? Uh, it, we have one person uh, with a lift truck that uh, installs uh, these. Probably takes uh, half an hour per location. Uh, so you could probably figure, uh, probably, I don't know, $100 for, for both of the locations if, if they're both used at the same hmm. time. So it's pretty minimal cost to taxpayers. And it's it, pretty minimal cost, yes. And it does have the benefit of obviously being partners with our Correct. our university. So I just want to make sure the taxpayers understand we're not spending a lot of money on doing this, and it's just a good, a good way to show our support for the hard rockers. So thank you. Becky Drury. Thank you, Mayor. I'm also going to support it. I'm glad you showed up tonight just to, and to really reiterate the partnership we have with the School of Mines, downtown painting. You try to get the community involved, and I like also that we're becoming a college town, not a town with a college in it. So I welcome this idea. Thank you. I yield. Anyone else? Chad Lewis. So, you know, whatever. Does uh, the motion include a uh, time period on this one again? Yeah, from 2020 to 2025. Thank you. I'm sorry. I'm... Okay, the motion on the floor is for approval. All in favor of that motion say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. On community development items, starting with item 41, a request by FMG Engineering for Black Hills Habitat for Humanity for a preliminary subdivision plan for proposed lots 1, 2, and 3 of Block 105 of Mahoney Edition, generally described as being located southwest uh, corner of the intersection of Bindway Street and MacArthur Street. And the recommendation from committee is to approve the stipulations. Motion by Lewis and a second by Lehman to approve with stipulations. All in favor of that motion say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Item 42, approve the request from Forest Products Distributors to consider an application for a petition of annexation for property generally described as being located in section 20, T2N, R8E, 5400 Old Folsom Road, and count, or, uh, Committee sent this to council without recommendation. Richie Nordstrom. Thank you, Mayor. I'm going to um, make a motion that we approve with option number one in the amount of $12,659.75. And if I get a second, I'd like to retain the floor. Second. Second by Drew. Go ahead. Thank you. Um, we've, we've established precedent on this before, such as uh, we've done this uh, and I've got an email from uh, community development on this uh, noting that we did something like this for Big Sky Edition and then also uh, for Johnson Ranch. So this is not the first time we're going to be doing something like this. And it's a payment to the fire districts in this case. And uh, with that, uh, if anybody else has got any questions on it, I, I fully support the, uh, the motion. Okay, Becky Drury. So where is the money coming from to pay this out of? I'll have to ask the finance department. To May I direct that to Pauline Sumption, please? Pauline Sumption, finance officer. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. The funding source would have to come out of the council budget because it's council action that is determining the payment that is going to be made. Um, quite frankly, you will need a supplement for that budget, and um, it would have to, at this point, with all the other things that have come forward, it would either be undesignated cash or reserves. I'm not quite sure what the balance is at this time. Mayor. 
Darla Drew. Um, I'd like to quickly read what the choices are. It's to approve the payment to the fire district with the full amount. That's a $12,000. That's number one. Uh, two, approve with payment to the fire district in a specified amount less than the full amount. Three, approve without any payment to the fire district. And four, deny. When I had asked at the meeting if anything would happen if we decided not to pay, um, the answer was basically nothing would happen. That would be really detrimental to the council. Um, so I will ask uh, whoever wants to take this, Dale or Ken Young, um, would you like to talk about what are the ramifications if we decide not to give them this money from the council budget? Ken Young. Yeah, so uh, if the council determines that they would prefer not to pay that amount, uh, annexation could still occur. There uh, may be an unresolved issue with the Rapid Valley Fire District. Um, it could uh, send a message for future annexation situations as to whether or not we're able to work with that. It is not a huge amount as, as far as these type of things could go, um, but uh, certainly uh, identifying a funding source to pay that is, is an issue, um, but uh, it, a, annexation could occur without paying it. Thank you, Ken. I'd like to direct a question to Pauline. Pauline, how much money do we have in our council's whatever reserve funds or wherever this would come from? I will say the, the February treasurer's report was done while I was gone. It's do, usually due like the 10th of the month, so I have not looked at that since I've been back, which is today in the office. Um, so I can't tell you exactly how much is in undesignated cash or reserves right now. We typically, it's based on expenditures and it's about $9 million, I believe, is what our dedicated reserves are set as. Um, I don't know if there's money in your council budget somewhere. If you don't want to travel, you can take it from the travel line item, that type of thing. Um, the other thing that I just want to tag on, if, I, if you don't mind, to, to Ken's comments, is that if you don't pay them, my understanding from conversations with um, the county at the time that we established this new ordinance was that um, they could continue, the, the fire district could continue to tax the property until that debt is paid off. And I could be wrong, um, but then it would still be on the property owner's tax bill. They would technically still be um, responsible for that, that payment to the, the fire district. So it's not like they would be out the money completely, it's just that, that they would have to still make up that amount. Interesting, okay, well, um, Thank you for that. And it is how I understood it, that it could go to the property owner to pay that, that additional 12000 And um, so I might come back in with another motion, but right now I'll, I'll listen if, if anybody else has anything to say about this. Anyone else have a comment on this item 42? Richie Nordstrom. Thank you, Mayor. I, I, I um, want to say that uh, this would set uh, an example of being a good neighbor. Um, the, because if we do deny this, they would have to pick up basically their cost plus, plus the property tax, if I'm not mistaken. So I can stand to be corrected, but so they would be paying twice to the fire district and then they would be paying their uh, city tax portion of this as well during the annexation. So. Uh, if I'm incorrect on that, I stand to be corrected, but uh, uh, it, it appears to me that they'd be paying twice if we denied anything. So, thank you. And I'll just add uh, from a, uh, I don't want to trivialize the budget, but there's, uh, these are numbers on paper, and so the 12,000 would go out to make this a clean uh, annexation. However, then the 
city portion of the property tax would start coming in. So money would be restored. It wouldn't go back directly into the council budget, but it would be some offsetting funds. I don't have an estimate on a city tax collection for the remainder of the year, but there would be a, a, a drawdown possibly on paper in the red for the council, but then there would be a, a buildup of funds elsewhere that could be balanced out at the end of the year with a supplement. Any other comments on this item? Okay, seeing none, the motion on the floor is to approve with option number one. Uh, all in favor of that motion say aye. aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Okay. Next, uh, for public hearing items, uh, which are items 43 through 48, we have some um, consent items identified as 43 by 46. And we've been contacted by the city attorney's office uh, that there was a procedural uh, error and that these items 43 through 46 need to be uh, continued to a special council meeting on April 1st, no, 20... Sorry, not oh. oh, okay. Okay, we need to continue it to the April 6th city council meeting, correct? That's what I was about to say before everyone interrupted me. <laughs> we have a motion, motion ready. A uh, motion to approve, I'm sorry, a motion to postpone, or I'm sorry, let me get this right. A motion to continue items 43 through 46 to the April 6th city council meeting. Okay, we have a motion to continue. Was there a second? Becky Drury. All in favor of that motion, say aye. aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Now to non-consent public hearing items 47 and 48. Item 47, original town of Rapid City approved resolution 2020-009, a request by Fisk Land Surveying and Consulting Engineers for one heart to consider an application for a vacation of right-of-way for alley right-of-way adjacent to property generally described as being located at 201 and 217 Kansas City Street and 216, 218, and 230 Quincy Street. Committee recommendation is to approve. So moved. Motion by Lewis. Second. Second by Drury. All in favor of this motion say aye. aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Item 48. Skyline sub Subdivision Number 2, Approved Resolution 2020-010, a request by Fisk Land Surveying and Consulting Engineers for Calvary Baptist Church to consider an application for vacation of Section Line Highway for Section Line Right-of-Way on property generally described as being located at 4601 Mount Rushmore Road. Committee recommendation was to approve. Motion by Armstrong, second by Lewis. All in favor of approval say aye. aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Item number 49 is the bill list, and we'll go to Finance uh, uh, Officer Pauline Sumption. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. There are no additions to the bill list, so the total is that which is attached at $11,580,332.23. Motion approved. Motion approved by Drury and a second by Drew. All in favor of approving the bill list say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Motion to adjourn by Lewis and a second by Armstrong. All in favor of being adjourned, say aye. We are adjourned. Thank you, everyone.